Hello and welcome. This is Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to use this poinsettia stamp set here, and I'm going to create a poinsettia card with a transparency that's a little bit sparkly. So the very first thing that I am doing is I am stamping and embossing my poinsettia image onto some heat resistant acetate. Now, this is acetate that you can emboss on. And like I said, it's heat resistant. However, when you're doing your embossing with your embossing gun, you don't want to um, hold the heat gun in one spot for too long because it's resistant. It's not completely heat proof. So by moving the heat gun around like you see me doing, I'm just dispersing that heat a little bit. It's enough to emboss that embossing powder, but not so much that it's gonna warp the plastic too much. After that is done, I turn that image over and I'm using some Copic markers to color my image. I started out with three different shades for the flower and I ended up only using two because the lightest one was just so light. So what I'm doing is I'm coloring the entire space with the lightest color, going in with the darkest color where I want the darkest color, and then I'm going back with the lightest color and kind of blending the color out between the light and the dark. Now, working on plastic is completely different from coloring with Copic markers on paper. It does not blend the same. There's no way to get those streaks out. When you're working on paper, you can easily get the streaks out of the paper, but that doesn't happen on the plastic. But because we are going to do an additional technique after this, that technique is going to help hide and minimize some of those streaks. So don't be too concerned about that. Um, just enjoy the process. Now I stamped and embossed the image on the acetate. If you wanted, you could actually just use a permanent ink like Stazon and just stamp the image and then continue with the coloring on the back side. So if you wanted to do it that way, you wouldn't need the heat resistant acetate. You could just use regular acetate. You could even some recycle some packaging that would work as well. But you still would want to do your coloring on the back side, not the side that did you did your stamping on. When it comes to the stamping and embossing, we do it this way because the Copic marker would just cover the, um, the embossing and it would start to break it down a little bit. By working on the back side of the image, you're not changing the embossing anyway. You're not coloring over top of it, you're just coloring behind it. If you choose to stamp with a Stazon ink, you still want to do your coloring on the back because the Copic marker and the Stazon ink, they're not friends. So you would have a mess. You would start to degrade your ink again and you get streaks from that ink. So the next step once you're done coloring is I'm taking some strong double-sided tape and I'm covering the back side. So that is the side that we just colored. I'm covering that whole back with it. I'm using Su Quang. I like this tape. I use it for many different glitter techniques. It sticks really, really well. And you see me rubbing on the back of the tape. I'm just making sure it has really good contact with that acetate. I don't want any bubbles in there. And I want to make sure that that tape is stuck to the whole thing. After that's done, I'm taking the backing off and putting some transparent glitter on the back here. You could do any color glitter you want. Um, I chose a transparent because I wanted it to be nice and neutral, but you could even do something like silver and whatnot. The one thing to keep in mind though is that Copic marker is transparent. So if you're using say a dark colored glitter, it's going to affect the color of your flower. After I've put my glitter on it, you saw me use the backing of the tape and I just buff that glitter in there, making sure it has really good contact with the tape and it also makes it sparkle really well. After that, I'm taking my card front, which is this burgundy piece here, and I'm cutting a rectangle out of it to make a window for that poinsettia image. So I'm taking some double-sided tape and putting it all around the edges, and right here I start stop paying attention to the camera, so I'm a little bit off here. Once it is taped to the front of the acetate, you can take some scissors and trim off the excess. I like to use a Swiffer duster to get any glitter off my image as well as the card base just to clean things up. The Swiffer Duster works really, really well with both glitter as well as Perfect Pearls for cleaning things up and taking any excess off. Next, we're gonna take that strong double-sided tape and we're going to put it around the edges of that frame to glue it onto the front of our card. 
Now, because that adhesive is so strong, I like to hover on top of it and um, make sure it's nice and centered before pressing it down. Now, all of the supplies that I'm using in this video is going to be down below listed and linked in the description. So if you're missing anything that I'm saying, it'll be listed down there. Next, I wanted to put a sentiment on my card. So I'm just using a peel off sticker that I have um, left over. These are really, really, really difficult to find. They discontinued them some years ago. You could also stamp and emboss a sentiment. I didn't think about, about it ahead of time. Otherwise, I might have done that. The last step I'm doing is putting some stickles in the center of that poinsettia just to give it a little bit of different texture and a little bit of different focus there. So this is the finished card. I hope you enjoyed learning this process. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day.